You guys are watching NFL Daily presented today by Manscaped. When you head over to manscaped.com slash chat, you'll get 20% off and free shipping on all their fantastic men's grooming products. So go check that out today at manscaped.com slash chat. We will make sure that link, folks, gets put in both the comment section and in the description to make your lives that much easier. We're talking Julio Jones trade destinations, the much promised and updated version after the NFL draft, because I forgot to do it. Uh, anyway, the Falcons are willing to listen on Julio Jones trade offers. Now, in reality, this would be a post-June 1st trade. At that point, the Falcons would save about $20 million in salary cap space over the next two seasons. Now, if they did it right now, before June 1st, they would eat extra money. It's just not going to happen. Julio Jones, over his career, has always been the, I'm a bit banged up, but I play all, almost all the games and I ball out. But in 2020, wasn't quite the case. Only played in nine games. He was, at least a little bit, limited throughout the year. Now, in that nine-game sample size, he still put up some pretty unreal numbers. Average about 85 and a half yards per game. So over the 16 games, he's were at almost, you know, 1,400 yards. So talent-wise, it is still very much there. And the reason why I remain unconvinced, despite the numerous rumors out there, that the that the Atlanta Falcons might not or might trade Julio, and the reason why they might not do it, is the presence and the lack thereof of other reliable receivers. I love Calvin Ridley. Don't get me wrong there. Russell Gage, a nice number three or number four. But if you want Julio Jones, one of the Falcons' number one needs now becomes a receiver. So because of that, I'm not sold that Julio Jones will be anywhere other than Atlanta next season. Or this season, I should say. So make your guesses known right now in the comments section. Speak your mind here for me. Where will Julio Jones play in 2021? Get your votes in right now. This is the pinned comments. We get the ad break here on YouTube. Scroll on down and get your votes in. Let's run through some Julio Jones trade destinations then, beginning with the New England Patriots. There is no way around it. We have to acknowledge it. The Patriots receiving core is still not very good. They do not have a legit Number one wide receiver. Julio Jones, if healthy, would be their best receiver in quite a while. And for New England, plenty of cap space if needed. Nikhil Harry has been a disappointment so far in his young NFL career. They signed Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne. And I like Jacoby Myers as a slot guy. Who is the guy that you go, oh man, we got to make sure our number one corner covers him and tries to, to lock him down. Or we, we got to double this guy. Does not exist on this roster. There's no way around it there. So I have a trade idea here that you might like or hate. It's all good either way. The Patriots get Julio Jones. The Falcons fix one of their biggest needs with Stephon Gilmore. And Atlanta also gets a second round pick. Now, I have a tough time identifying what exactly the value is for Stephon Gilmore, I'm not sure if this is too high or if it's too low or whatever, but I think this might be about right from that perspective. You get the second round pick and Stephon Gilmore, you have to pay, brings down his value, but I like it there. So what I want you guys to do right now is to put your Julio Jones trade ideas in the comments section. Maybe you didn't like mine. It's all good. Take the opportunity right now, do the exact same. And let me know what you guys think with your Julio Jones trade ideas. Don't forget to put what team he's going to, by the way. The Tennessee Titans, another one of what I have as my clear-cut top two. They're not ranked, but I love the Titans and I love the Patriots on this list. Tennessee loses Corey Davis in free agency. They draft Des Fitzpatrick in round four. They sign Josh Reynolds, and they also cut Adam Humphreys. So receiving core-wise... I believe Tennessee has taken a step back. Now, making the money work is tricky. But from a need perspective, if you can pair A.J. Brown with Julio Jones, you're in great shape. The rest of these guys at receiver, I mean, it's, it's not great, fellas. 
Josh Reynolds is, is, is more of a three as far as I'm concerned. And then fighting for wide receiver three right now is Cameron Batson, Westbrook Akinney, Des Fitzpatrick, maybe Chester Rogers or other draft pick, Racy McMath. I don't see a good number two. And I barely see a good number three on this roster. So if I'm Tennessee, all in right now with their current roster and, and, and coaching staff, plus the familiarity of Arthur Smith in Atlanta, I'd at least make the call at that point. The new Lawnmower 4.0 is out. You can save 20% and get free shipping when you head to manscaped.com slash chat. Don't forget to use the promo code chat either, mind you, because it helps it ensure you get that 20% off and the free shipping. But the Lawnmower 4.0, it's new and improved. Better ergonomic design, better charger, uh, better lighting as well, in case you got to do it at night or you're doing it in the shower or whatever, because it is waterproof by the way and multiple head designs as well these are the best men's grooming products out there so go get yours today and save some money along the way it's manscaped.com slash chat and don't forget that promo code either right there bottom of your screen to make your lives easier we'll put the link in the comment section and the description as well to the Las Vegas Raiders now, where, look, I mean, they are always connected to big-name receivers, and they get them sometimes as well. This current roster does not have a legit number one guy. It, Henry Ruggs is there, who I know they're excited about as, as a vertical threat, but John Brown, Hunter Renfro, I'm excited about Brian Edwards long-term, but he's not proven yet. Zay Jones, Willie Sneed. Well, it's, 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 it's not that good, if we're being honest. Julio Jones comes to town, though, and all of a sudden, Ruggs and Jones and Brown and Renfro, and okay, that's a pretty good rotation there at that point. That actually does begin to intrigue me. So I like that idea for the Raiders going out and getting Julio Jones. Now, they do have to get creative with the money, but I think it is at least a possibility. They could make it work. So I have a, a trade package here as well. I got who's like a, a he's like like a first round value is what I'm trying to go for there. So I don't want to just do a first round pick. I want to get different there. But for like Titans and whatever, it's it's your first rounder probably, if not more than that. Falcons get Brian Edwards and two second round picks. Now I've seen some other reports out there from Albert Breer, Peter King that a straight up second might get it done, and that makes no sense to me. So because of that, I'm giving up more than what other reporters have suggested there. Edwards is now uh, roll-blocked, if you will, with Julio Jones on the team. Plus two seconds, not a bad offer if the Falcons are selling Julio Jones at what it appears he's being vetted, which I think is pretty weird. So get your votes in right now for me, folks. Will the Falcons trade away Julio Jones? Type Y for yes, they will. Or type N for no, they will not. Get your votes and make your voice heard right now in the comments section. All right, I got four more teams. We'll go a little bit faster, though, on these. The Indianapolis Colts. They could use, as far as I'm concerned, another proven receiver. Now, their biggest issue is that the Carson Wentz trade does hurt their draft capital. And Chris Ballard isn't ever fully going all in from that perspective. Now, Here's what the Colts have right now. Aging T.Y. Hilton. Promising young receiver Michael Pittman. Injured Paris Campbell. And then a bunch of guys. If you guys can name three of these players, I'll be very impressed. Um, Zach Pascal. Mike Strong's a seventh-round rookie. Des Patman. J.J. Nelson is fast. Ashton Dolan is, is you know, kind of like, like Mike Strong there. In, in terms of being able, able to make some plays and being a good size, height, weight, speed player. Tyler Vaughn's, I've never liked that much. Gary Jennings was a fifth-round pick or whatever. You know, Courtney Davis was hyped as an undrafted guy. hasn't done anything. Same with Tariq Black. So proven talent-wise, there's like three and a half, maybe, three maybe? I'd go explore Julio Jones trade if I were them. So are you guys subscribed? If so, type in yes. If not... Type in L, because you're a loser. Now, we can get that changed. It's life. Some people win. Some people lose. It's football. But if you want to be a winner, all you got to do, 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 do is subscribe right now here to Chat Sports. The Detroit Lions now, who, of the teams we're going through, my God, do they need wide receiver help. 
like in the absolute worst way. This team is not setting Jared Goff up for success. Now, they have the draft capital, both in terms of volume, thanks to the Rams' Jared Goff-Matthew Stafford trade, and the likelihood that they're probably going to be early draft picks. But I wonder if Detroit will hoard those, if they are more concerned about rebuilding and keeping their draft capital. But purely from a need perspective, oh my God, the Lions receiving core is trash. Like, I am sorry, Detroit fans, if you've bought into this. It's horrible. Tyrell Williams has been banged up for two years and was never a number one. Brashad Perryman is a vertical threat. Amon Ross St. Brown's a nice little slot receiver as a rookie. Quintez Stevens is a decent receiver four. The problem is, is there a single wide receiver two on this roster? I think they're all receiver threes or worse. I think in reality, the Detroit Lions have the worst wide receiver core in the NFL. Now, you guys can get your votes in here as to what you guys think it is. And maybe Julio Jones would rather not ever play for Detroit. But need-wise, I had to include him because I think the Lions are in really, really rough shape there. Let's go to the L.A. Chargers now as a potential trade fit here for Julio Jones. This would be going all in on expensive pieces while Justin Herbert is cheap and on his rookie contract. And let's think about it. Julio Jones, Keenan Allen, it's a great one-two punch, man. That's like one of the better ones in the NFL. Allen can do some underneath stuff. Julio can do the vertical stuff. Both can flip-flop those roles too. It's awesome. Now, I don't consider receiver to be this team's biggest need. And if you were to go get Julio Jones, you would probably have to do something with the contract of Mike Williams. Either send him to Atlanta as part of the deal or, you know, potentially restructure him or extend him or whatever. But Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Julio Jones, or even just Keenan and Julio, that's very intriguing if you're L.A. And I like Mike Williams, but I don't think he's ever quite been able to produce, in part because of injuries, in the way that the Tars were hoping he was going to when he was the first-round pick out of Clemson. So, good football player, has value, but if they were to get Julio, he might have to go as part of that trade. All right, rapid fire now on these last two teams that I wanted to mention. If you want to keep Aaron Rodgers happy, maybe trading for Julio Jones is a way to do that. Now, you'd have to probably extend and or restructure Adams and or Aaron Rodgers, but... You're adding Julio Jones. It's probably something that you should try to do anyway. The last team I wanted to mention here, the San Francisco 49ers. Now, they are always linked to Julio Jones because of Kyle Shanahan. And it's a fun idea to go out and get Julio and put him with Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, and it's awesome, and Kittle and Trey Lance, and they win the NFC you know, West again, blah, blah, blah. They don't have the draft picks. Unless Julio Jones' value is like a, a singular second-round pick, I don't see any way in which the, the Niners could actually compete in a potential bidding war for Julio Jones. 